Good morning. Good morning. Good Welcome morning. to the Institute of Archetype Pattern Workshop. Now this is a school, it is not a church, and neither we affiliate with a church or religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of his eternal pattern, purpose, and plan operating throughout eternity unto this present day. Now this school is a result of a divine panoramic vision given to Dr. Henry Clifford Finley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931 and has established Trinity Christ schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. Now in this school, we used to teach by the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Now, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the Lord. The true title for the Word of Son is Elohim. It has also been improperly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but like Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1,400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord in God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized in his pure spirit state on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself, because a cloud is no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word of Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now, this shape and form can only be seen in a divine vision and understood in a divine revelation. Later on, this self same spirit manifest himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. 
It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in the school to prove that everything in the universe operates according to the structure and function of the threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten primary Objectives of this institute are as follows. Number one is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature, and the power is latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. And seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the devil, the serpent, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name, given among men, whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watcher is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. This morning we'll have a prayer by Dr. Joe uh, Ceballos. Our scripture lesson will be... Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second chapter. Second chapter, and it will be read by Dr. Irene Ramirez. And we'll have a selection of music after the prayer. Good morning, class. Good morning. We gather here again one more time to learn and be able to understand purpose, pattern, and plan for our Heavenly Father, Yahweh Elohim, through His Son, Yahshua the Messiah. We ask all these blessings in His name, on His only begotten names, the only begotten Son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say, Hallelujah. <coughs>
to no profit, but to the uh, subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Be shun profane, vain babbling, for they will increase unto more unrighteousness, and their word will eat as do, doeth a caker, canner, of whom is Hymetheus and Pelephetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh standeth sure, having this seal. Yahweh knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of the Messiah depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and suitable for the master is used and prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, love, peace, with them that call on Yahweh out of a pure heart. But foolishness and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. And the servant of Yahweh must not strive, but be gentle unto all men have to teach patient in meekness instruction instructing those that are, are opposed perhaps Yahweh will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth and they may recover themselves out of the snare of the adversary who are taken captive by him at his will and I have read 2nd Timothy 2nd chapter that's all say Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alrighty, good morning once again, and we hope that you enjoy yourself oh, today. I'm losing my balance here. Okay, and uh, take notes, you know, and what you uh, take notes on and the verses, everything, questions, or whatever you have, write it down. Because sometimes you may get an answer while the speaker is speaking, you know. So, without further ado, our first speaker will be Dr. Will Williams. Morning. Yes, yeah, indeed, an honor and a pleasure to be here this morning to learn more of this great and awesome, colossal, stupendous panoramic vision and revelation given to us by Yahweh Elohim. Okay, um, I had I asked for that scripture lesson to be read because of a passage in there, and basically it's one that most of us are familiar with, and that one passage being study to show thyself approve of Yahweh. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Now, we've come to learn that that's this chart here. It's an illustration of, it's an illustration of that. I keep losing the signal. Yeah, the... Just uh, uh, antenna, maybe? Yeah. Okay. And... Um, Anyway, we'll just we'll just wing it. Well, yeah. uh, this, age is, uh, this this chronology uh, that's the proper name for this chart here. It's called a chronology chart, but we, we always say ages and dispensations. Okay. Now, I had heard of dispensations before I came into class, but I didn't really quite understand it. In fact, Dr. Kinley did not invent the concept of dispensation. I know that. Some people might not like me saying that. But it was a concept in Christian theology that goes back to the, to the 1800s, in the 19th century. 
It, it came about by a man named uh, Darby. His last name was Darby. And uh, he came up with the idea. Well, it was inspired to him. He came up with the idea to show that there were epochs in history and that there were dispensations of divine ordering of affairs. This Bible here is a Schofield reference Bible. The man who came up with this Bible was a man named C.I. Schofield. He was one of the biggest proponents of dispensationalism. Now, as I said, this got started by a man named Darden in England. How it got to America was by C.I. Schofield. Okay, he, he was the one who promoted dispensationalism. See, because dispensationalism ties into uh, Clarence Larkin's work, mm -hmm. what he wrote about premillennialism. And if you don't know what premillennialism is, it's just a nice fancy name for the rapture. Mm -hmm. Okay, in Christian theology. Now, I'm not going to go through all of that, you know, but I'm going to go, now, I'm going to go through these dispensations and ages. But, as I said, Dr. Kinley didn't invent this. You know, he, he appropriated it, but what Dr. Kinley did was show the correct application of it, if you will. Okay? Now, let's, let's just look at this and just see... Uh, See what we can do. How we can, we can start off with this. Okay. Now it says here, the creation abides within Yahweh or eternity. Okay. Yahweh is pure spirit. Okay. And the creation, well, let's, let's, let's just start it off like this. Yeah, John 4.24, may as well begin at the beginning. John 4 and 24. For Elohim is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Well, well, correct, For correct. Yahweh is spirit. Yahweh is spirit. See, yeah. See, see, he's spirit. All right. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. Now, John 1 and 1. In the beginning, the Speak word, in the beginning, the word was, in the beginning, the word, in the beginning, was the word and the word was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. Okay, then now in the beginning was the word. This is Elohim. Taking on shape and form. Alright? The creation abides within him. This is the first cause of all creation. Right. Okay? When Yahweh see these attributes here took on shape and form in part, not in totality. It didn't take all of this for these attributes to take on shape and form. Yahweh pure spirit went out of business. Okay? And it was the son who did the father's work, who fulfilled the will of the father. This is the word. Keep reading. All things were made uh, by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay, now, this is the first cause of all creation. And as we see here, creation by the pattern. But what we want to do, we want to go back here. Creation abides within Yahweh or eternity. See, the reason why it says that here, because here, Elohim, see, abides within Yahweh. Because this heart here is the same as this shape and form here. Okay? Now, here we got here the beginning. All right? That's Elohim. That's the shape and form. Now we got here the angelic creation. Uh... Let's see, I think we could use some of these plates. Mm -hmm. um, not with the big plates. Okay. What do you want? Uh, Number. Well, let's see. The angelic creation. How about that? Let's, 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 let's start with that. 14? Yes. Let's get uh, Revelation 12 chapter. 
but before I read that, we have the angelic creation here, all right? And we have, we got the first age here, all right? We have the first age, we have the angelic creation here, and we have a physical creation here. If you notice, there's a dotted line here, and this is the first age, the creative age. Now, let's, let me say something about ages. Ages, in the physical sense, is an epoch of time. Generally, 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. See, 2,000 years is an age. It's generally considered the length of an age. For example, and Dr. Kelly uses this as an example. He says, the antediluvian age was 1,656 years. So because this is less than 2,000, it's considered to be a short age. Here, this is the post-diluvian age, and this lasted 2,377 years. All right? Because it went over 2,000, this is considered to be a long age. Right. Okay? Get it? All right? But now, here, there's no time going on here. Right. See, this is in the day. See, this, 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 uh, before you read Revelations, get, uh, I want the day. Well, I oh. think that's Genesis, right? The second chapter. Second probably. chapter. See, that these things were created in the day. All right? And that's what I want to try to impress. What we have here is the day of eternity. Where are you at? Uh, Genesis, second chapter, two and one. Okay. And the holy name. These are the origins of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh Elohim made them, the earth and the heavens. All right. Created in the day. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, what I want. I want plate. Four. I think it's four. Three. 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 Uh, Come on. You can bring three up. You can bring three up. Bring three up. But I need four. Yeah, it's stuck to double tiered and the numbers are. It should be on the top. It's the cosmogony. Cosmogony plate. Alright, we got the God here. here. This is Elohim. See, this is the creation right here. Okay? He's coming out from behind the veil. In this case, pure spirit. I'll say the cloud, just for reference. The veil of inscrutable incomprehensible, all right? He's coming from behind, and he's appearing here. These attributes taking on shape and form, okay? Uh, got a clap? Clap, I need to clap for this. I thought I saw a Okay. Yeah, for this one. Okay. All right. Um, we don't have cosmology? It should be in there. Six. Six. Four, five, four. Where's four? Four. No, no, it's not four. I don't know where it's four. Five. No four. No four. Twelve. Oh, that's got to be. Is it a truck? Here we have the angelic creation, right? Let's see it. And, uh, and I want to correlate that to what's got down here with the chart, but I need, I need to for it. Exception. Play for exception. Oh, that should be here. We just use it the other way. You know what? <laughs> it's like last week. I have it. <laughs> oh. It's up here. <laughs> it's up here. One another clamp? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. We're getting used to these charts. All right. 
All right. Okay. <laughs> now, <clears throat> the reason why I have this up here is because it's showing you this on the veil here the division between spirit and matter. Also, you see angels here. This is representative of the angelic creation. Okay? Now, here, this heart. Alright? This heart is a, this heart is the same as this God here. This heart is Elohim. Elohim is passing through the veil. And he is trans he's transmuting in part into one hydrogen atom or into that first particle. Okay? The physical creation. Alright? And then from that, an amalgamated, and then from that, they multiply mm -hmm. and becomes this amalgamated conglomeration of a coring mass. Okay, now, come over this way. Now, look here. Here's the first stage. Here's the angelic creation. Here's the physical creation. Mm -hmm. This is this dotted line here. It's trying to show you that they're connected. It's dotted like, you know, the angelic creation and the physical creation are connected, all right? The best illustration I can show you of that is the one between the plants. I know, that's a sick looking tree. <laughs> and the man. Okay? Now... The plants see they need sunlight. Right. All right? They need sunlight. All right? To make, to make their food. All right? They also need something else. They need carbon dioxide. All right? Which we know as CO2. The plants need that. And in combination with that, they make their food, which is chlorophyll. Now, the carbon dioxide the plant takes, see, it only needs the carbon part of this, of, of this uh, compound. All right. Correct. The other part, the O2 part, the oxygen part, it does not need. So the plant expels the oxygen. But guess what? We'll take it. Right. The animals, we'll, we'll take the O2. And we'll breathe it in, and we and we will expel the CO two, and so therefore the symbiotic cycle continues. See, there's a relationship between the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. Right. Okay. Just as there's a re relationship between, and see, the plant kingdom is representative of the angelic creation, and over here, this is representative of the physical creation. Just like over here. Here you have the angelic creation, and here you have the physical creation here, separated by a dotted line. See, meaning that there's there's an intercourse going on between the two. Mm -hmm. Also, these two represent the two witnesses of Yahweh mm -hmm. manifested. The incorporeal state and the physical state. Okay? Now, now we can go back to the 12th chapter of Revelation. All right, now here we, here we got here the, the, the inorganic earth, unformed earth. All right, now. Revelation. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, uh -huh. and the moon under her feet, and upon her head was a crown, of 12 stars. Yeah, yeah, you read out the holy name. I really should start with the verse after that. Okay, now, I'm doing the King, I mean, the scope of King James I'm reading. Oh, okay, go ahead. You have 12 and 1? Yep. A pretty great wonder. Wait, wait this is scope. Oh, okay, that's what I want. That's, that's, okay, I'm sorry. My, my error. Go ahead. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, mm -hmm. and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Mm -hmm. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain of be, to be delivered. Mm -hmm. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, 
and behold, a great red dragon, mm -hmm. having seven heads and ten crowns, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And he and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, mm -hmm. and did cast them to the earth. To the earth. Now, see, here's the earth. See, the earth is the woman is representative of the earth. Here's these demons out here. They're immersed in ethereal darkness surrounding the earth. The earth hasn't, nothing's happened yet. And they're already here. But they're, they're, they're here because, I mean, because mm -hmm. we saw, you know, that the, the great uh, amalgamated conglomeration of a coiling mass. That's what we got going at that point when we left it on the, on the cosmogony. But now nothing's been created yet. And here there's war and these folks are cast out here among the unfinished earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. And he, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, uh -huh. and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, See, uh -huh. for to devour her child as soon as it was born. To devour her child as soon as it was born. Mm -hmm. See, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. See, because here's the earth, here's the earth is going to birth a man, Adam, because Adam's going to come out of this. But see, but, but Adam, when Adam was created, you didn't see the devil there. But as soon as the woman comes out, see, as soon as the woman comes out, here he comes. Okay? Here he comes. See, ready to devour. Okay, I'm, look, I'm, showing, you, I'm showing you the type so that you can see the fulfillment down here. But I'm showing you the type here. All right? And what's happening over here. The ages and dispensations. You see, he's cast out, all right, into the unformed earth, unformed physical creation, going to and fro, seeking who may be devoured. In fact, he saw this creation come forth, and then saw the man come forth. Saw the man come forth. He didn't do nothing. But then he saw the man put into a deep sleep, and a woman, the rib and the womb taken out, and a womb man brought to him, all right, and here they are in peace and in harmony. See, and then and then you see Satan coming up, coming up over here. Why, why, why is he pushing a woman? Draw a line. Let's just draw a line. Because he approached the woman up here mm -hmm. in heaven, the war in heaven. He did the same thing. It's the same in Mo. Continue reading. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations uh -huh. with the rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto Yahweh and to his throne. See, that is the fulfillment. Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Okay? Continue. And the woman, woman fled into the wilderness, and where she had a place prepared for Yahweh, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days and there was war in heaven mm -hmm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world he was cast out into the earth, mm -hmm. and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Eloah and the power of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our Eloah day and night. Okay, good enough. So now there was a war up here. Right. And they were cast out, okay? Now, all the angels up here were not deceived. I know some people say that, but Dr. Kenny never preached that. No. You're not going to find any writing where Dr. Kenny said all the angels were deceived. That's just ain't so. And the reason why is because he looked at it from the natural standpoint. See, when Israel came up here to Canaan's land, see, there were nations that were left up there to prove them. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's the proof that all the angels didn't sin. Plus, it was an, plus you got Michael and Gabriel up here. And they, they represent the two witnesses. So how are you going to deceive Yahweh's witnesses? And you say, well, oh, well, who are they so special? Well, look, I got the migratory Turk to look at. Because down here in Egypt, you got Shipper and Pua. Did they follow Pharaoh's orders to, to kill the boy babies? No, they feared Elohim. 
Did Michael and Gabriel take Satan's orders to curtail the angelic creation? No. They feared Elohim. Now, how simple is that? You can't get any simpler than that. But you want to make up something like, oh, well, they were deceived, but then they repented and all that. You know, and the, the scriptures don't even support that. Right. The purpose does not support that. And I'm looking at the migratory trek. Mm -hmm. And the migratory trek is, is a representation of a greater and more perfect sanctuary, which is the universe. That's how Dr. Kennedy taught. You had to right. take one thing to apply it to another. The natural to apply to the spiritual. And that's what we're looking at. So now here, here's this first first age. And then we hear, see here, the Garden of Eden on this side of the line. So the Garden of Eden was created in the day of eternity. And Adam and Eve were placed in the Garden of Eden in a type of the day. Right. Okay, so when we say the day, that means time had not yet started time as marked by the movement of the celestial bodies, okay? Now, let's get the Genesis, third chapter. Because uh, we want to show you, see, Dispensations. Dispensations have the ability. Oh, now, first, let's, let's, let's describe what a dis dispensation is. A dispensation is a divine ordering of affairs. But matter of fact, we can read it out of the, the glossary in the textbook. Uh, well, I could help you guys. I know, I know it's an awful lot of reading here. We don't have a whole lot of folks here. Yeah. Uh, It's in, it's in volume one, the glossary. Is there a dictionary there? Yeah. Because so I, want, I want to read what Dr. Kinley said about the... Uh, Dispensations. Yes. The glossary, page 121, in volume one. Dispensation doesn't have it here. Should. It doesn't? It's not in there? No. You want to read? I mean, well, D? No. I thought it was in there, no? Oh, okay. I know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of uh, the section. Okay. The section dispensation. Yeah. Uh, page 93. That's what I'm thinking. Full note. It's in there. See, okay. 90, page 93, volume 1. And, and he has here dispensation. See right there? All right. Okay. That's what I'm reading from. And he says, the divine ordering of affairs of the world be an appointment or arrangement, as by Yahweh, mm -hmm. see, a divinely appointed order or system. Okay? Now, that's what Yahweh has set up. And, and, that's, and, it's, and it's appropriate because Yahweh is a universal pattern. Right. So that just fits right in. Now, that's what a dispensation is. Usually a dispensation is, is brought about through a vessel. In these cases, through these men. Now, also, a dispensation has the ability to close an age. It has the ability to open an age. Okay, it can close an age or open an age. So now, now we're now we're back in Genesis. You want to get uh, three and seven where they were driven out? Uh, no, I want the part where they got busted in the, mm -hmm. in the cool of the day. Okay, I'll start at three and seven. And the eyes, okay, I'll start at three and six. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and it was ple pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave it unto, also gave it unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, mm -hmm. and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves apron. And they heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim, as they walk, were walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, among the trees of the garden. And Yahweh Elohim cried unto the man and said unto him, Where is thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. 
And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, with me, she gave to me the tree, and I did eat. And Yahweh Elohim said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And Yahweh Elohim said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Okay, so dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, that's what that's what was told to the serpent. Right. See, that's part of this dispensation, but but that's going to last for from now until, I mean, the serpent, you know, he's mm -hmm. going to eat dust, but continue. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, mm -hmm. and between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Mm -hmm. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy pain and thy conception. In pain thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, mm -hmm. and shall rule over thee. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall I bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, and until return unto the ground. For out it was thou was taken, for dust thou art, until dust thou shalt return. And the man called his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also to take his wife did Yahweh Elohim make coats of skin, and clothe them. And Yahweh Elohim made, and Yahweh Elohim said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now let's put forth the hand, and also the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore Yahweh Elohim sent forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Okay, now, I'll give you a break for a moment. Now, what she read about what was going to happen to Satan, what was going to happen to Eve, what was going to happen to Adam, that's all part of what Yahweh dispensed through the man Adam. And this is the Adamic dispensation. Mm -hmm. This dispensation closed the creative age. This will come over here. You can see it illustrated here right. in the most holy place. This is the Garden of Eden. This is the creative age here. The sun is in the zenith of the sky prior to Eve touching this tree. It's in the zenith. There's no time. But then once Eve touches the tree and then gives it to her husband, Mm -hmm. See, then time begins because now it's in the cool of the day or the sun has moved from its position to another position, okay? And then Elohim comes walking and says, well, Adam, where are you at? And they're, they're hiding and they're ashamed. And then this is where, where Yahweh dispensed unto, to the man, through the man Adam. And now here's this angel. Uh, keep reading. Therefore, Yahweh Elohim sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove him out the man and placed him in the east of the garden of Eden cherubs and the flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. And the man knew his wife. Okay, now here's this angel driving Adam out. In other words, this is the creative age. Now here's the angel driving him. They are leaving. The creative age, and they're coming into the antediluvian age. And look, the sun is setting here. So the antediluvian age began in darkness. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is a dispensational change. This is this is the Adamic. What you're looking at is the Adamic dispensation. Right. See, closing, closing. The age out, closing the creative age out, and opening the antediluvian age. Mm. Okay? Wow. Now, dispensation can last until Yahweh appoints another man mm -hmm. 
to dispensate through. Okay. So now, so now Adam, he uh, he died after 930 years. See, he died after 930, but that didn't stop the Adamic dispensation. See, because 50 years after Adam died, Enoch prophesied. See, and then seven years later, see, he was translated. All right? Now, 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 those events that happened, other things that happened during the Adamic dispensation was like uh, the city of Enoch mm -hmm. was built. Cain built the city of Enoch. This was during the Adamic dispensation. Enoch, again, as I said, was translated mm -hmm. during the Adamic dispensation. All right? Lamech did what he did during the Adamic dispensation. Okay? His, his offspring. But now Noah... Was, was sent along. Uh, well, let's, let's read it. Genesis 6 and 1. Let's start there. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to, unto him. Uh -huh. unto them. And the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which, was, which they choose. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with men, for he is but flesh. Let the days uh, be a hundred and twenty. A hundred and twenty. See, he's, he's marking it already. Mm -hmm. But up to that point, this was the Adamic dispensation. All right, continue. And there were Nephilims in or the earth. Or giants, or giants. That's, mm -hmm. what, that's what the... Uh, there were giants in the earth. Yeah, there were giants. I know Nephilim, that's what A.B. Train is mm -hmm. Degenerates, but see what they would... Adam was a giant of a man. Mm -hmm. There were giants back then, see. But this was all during the Adamic, Adamic dispensation. Continue. There were giants in those days. And after that, when the sons of Elohim came unto the daughters of men, uh -huh. and they bare ch children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Okay, all of this happened during the Adamic dispensation. Okay, keep going. And Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, uh -huh. and that every intent of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continually. And he repented Yahweh that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And Yahweh said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, mm -hmm. both man and beast, and every creeping thing, and birds of the heaven, for it repent me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. All right, see, now that's the beginning of the Noahic dispensation. Mm -hmm. The end of the Adamic came right then and there when Yahweh appointed Noah. And he appointed Noah 120 years before he unleashed the flood. Because mm -hmm. Noah's 480 years old right now at this point. But this is the beginning of the Noahic dispensation. Continue. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, upright in the in his generation, and Noah walked with Elohim. Okay, that's good enough. All right, now Noah. Now, if you don't know the story of Noah, see, Noah had three sons, and he was told to go out and preach that, that there was going to be a flood. Problem was, people had never seen it rain before because it had never rained before at this point. Okay, see, that and that's the thing. A lot of people don't know how the antediluvian world was like. It was a totally different world. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. the people were giants. There were dinosaurs that existed. The world was one land mass. Mm -hmm. It did not rain on the earth. That was a totally different world. Oh, yeah. See, and so for Noah to go out and tell people it was going to rain, well, actually, at first, there were people that believed him. He had followers. He had people that helped him himself and his sons build the ark. But then after 120 years, people were like, uh, well, you know, I don't, you know, what's up? I don't see no water. And, you know, and, uh, and, and people fell away the closer it got to the end. Mm -hmm. Kind of similar to what it is now. The closer that it gets to the end of the age, people mm -hmm. fall away and say, ah, you always slack, you always late. You know, that kind of thing. But Noah was told to go and preach to put the blood on their head. They built an ark, okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm going through it 
kind of hurt me because I really want to get through all of these dispensations and kind of get somewhat of reasonable explanation of why they're there in these ages, okay? Now, um, just looking at it by the pattern, he went out and he put blood on their heads, right? He's working by the sweat of his brow, well, his, his, his sons are, by the sweat of his brow, their brow, that's water, and they're preaching about a flood. Here's the angel here with the plans. That's the spirit. All right, now get uh, Genesis 7 and 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the same month, the same day, were all the heavens, were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And the windows of heaven were opened. The fountains of the deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. That's like the renting of a veil. Go ahead. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So it rained 40 days and 40 nights. That's the 40 principle here. Plus you have the window there. There's a light. All right. There's a door. All right. They had uh, bread. They had supplies. The Holy Spirit in Noah. See, was, that was the intercessor or the mediator. See, between Yahweh and man. And see, they had all of that. And see, and this is the noatic dispensation. This is closing the antediluvian age. All right? The noatic dispensation closed the antediluvian age, and it opened the post-diluvian age. See? Dispensations can close an age. It can open an age. See, just like we saw with the Adamic. It closed an age, and it opened an age. The Noahic dispensation closed an age, and now it's going to open an age. Okay? Right? right? Um, Genesis 8, I think is where, where, where Noah comes out the ark. Uh, 14, maybe, or something like that. Okay, let me try this here. In, and it came to pass in the six hundred hundred and the first year, uh -huh. in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. Mm -hmm. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. Mm -hmm. And in the second month, on the seventh day, on the twentieth day of the month, was the earth dry. Was the earth dry. See, that, and, and really, it's exactly one year and ten days. See, one, one year and ten days. That's how long the flood lasted. And see, and, and that, now that is the post diluvian that's the beginning of the post diluvian age right there. See, now we're on the other, because here's the ark on the other side. In fact, it's resting up here in the mountains of Ararat. But now this is after the flood. So in other words, this is the post, this is the post diluvian age right here. See, look over here. We started here. This is the creative age. All right, then we left the creative age. We see Adam and Eve walking out of the creative age into the antediluvian age. Here's Noah and his family. They're in the antediluvian age. They get into the ark and they sail across from the antediluvian age into the post-diluvian age. Because it said this is after the flood. So this is the post-diluvian age. But you see how the dispensation opens and closes an age. Okay, that's the point I'm trying to impress upon you. It, it has one of it has those abilities. I'm talking about dispensations. Okay, now I'm going to press on. Let's get to the third dispensation. See, now we're in the we're in the post diluvian age, and so now we're going to come upon another dispensation, 427 years after the flood, Genesis 12 and one. Now Yahweh had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, mm -hmm. and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, from thy father's house, unto a land that I have showed thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. So Abram departed from Yahweh, as Yahweh had spoken unto him, and Lot went with them. 
and Abram and 70 and five was well, 70 and five years old when he departed of Hera. All right. Now, here we got the third dispensation here. All right. Now, Yahweh giving him the promise. That was the, the beginning of, the, of that dispensation. That was confirmed by one Melchizedek, king and high priest of Salem. See? Who confirmed, see, and we got him illustrated here. He's overshadowing Abraham and he's blessing the seed in Abraham's loins. All right? That's why you see on the Melchizedek and Abraham. The promise given to Abraham and the blessing that was given to Abraham of that promise happened like within not long from each other. Because, see, Abraham, when he was given the promise, he was still. In, uh, in, in the land of the Chaldees. He had not yet crossed the Euphrates River. But once he did cross the Euphrates River and came down into Canaan's land, that made him a Hebrew, okay? But the point I want to show is this is the third dispensation. What was, what was being dispensed? A promise that through, a, that through his seed, all families of the earth would be blessed. Mm -hmm. That's what was dispensed to Abraham, see? We are a recipient of that seed. But just to give you an idea, right here. You see this here? See, here's it. Here it says, Abrahamic promise. Right. You see this line here? It says, promise fulfilled. First to the Jews on the day of Pentecost, then seven years later to the Gentiles. Right. Because why? The promise was that through his seed, all families of the earth would be blessed. Mm -hmm. Well, there's only two families, Jews and Gentiles. Right. Mm -hmm. You see? That's why we always say, see, this is a dispensation of faith. See, that's why we say, and when we, when we get to it, we get to Pentecost, we say this. This is a dispensation of grace. However, because of a promise that was given to Abraham, we say this. We are saved by grace right. through faith. Because of a promise. See? We'll get there. Mm -hmm. Because before that happens, we got to get a law in here. We got to get a law of calling the ordinances. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay? Now, that is, uh, what's that? Uh, let's start with uh, Exodus 19, 19th chapter. Mm -hmm. See, because now, Abraham, see, from Abraham's birth, to the law being given from Mount Sinai, minus, minus Ishmael's 15 years, it's 490 years. Okay? Right. So now here's, this is, now this is the dispensation of faith. Now we're getting ready to go into the dispensation of the law. Read. 19 and 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai, mm -hmm. where they were departed from Rephidim, and will come to the desert of Sinai, and pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up to Elohim, and Yahweh called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall I say unto the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I have done unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if thou wilt obey my voice indeed, and keep my commandments, which I have, which I, then ye shall be a particular people, treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Okay, okay. I want to get to, uh, they, they, they're getting to the mountain, and Moses is getting instructions on what they should do. Mm -hmm. All right, and they should clean up and, uh, don't go against their wives. Put a border around the mount. Don't touch the mount because you'll be killed. Mm -hmm. All right? Because Yahweh was going to speak to them. And this is what Yahweh spoke to them. Um, is it Exodus 20? Yeah. And Elohim spoke unto the, uh, spoke these words, saying, I am Yahweh the Elohim, mm -hmm. which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no Elohim before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven idols mm -hmm. or anything that is uh, anything that is in heaven above 
or that is in the earth beneath. Okay, just to cut this up. Mm -hmm. He's speaking the Ten Commandments law to them. He's thundering down the Ten Commandments law. This is, this is the dispensation of the law. This is when it began. See? See? June 6, 1491, BBY. Okay? Now, get down there where it says, uh, it should be in that same chapter where the, where the Israelites said, don't, don't let the doctors no more. Okay, uh, 20 and 18. Yeah. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when they saw it, they were moved afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou unto us, for we, for we will hear. And let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for Elohim is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick cloud where Elohim was. Okay, good enough. Now, this is the dispensation of the law, or what we call the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. The 613 carnal ordinances. All right, we just read about 10 of them, but, they, but there were 613 altogether that were given to the Israelites mm -hmm. that, that came under what we call here the dispensation of the law in the post diluvian age, which is the third age. And let me say something else too while I'm on it. As I said, this age, first age, was in eternity. This age is the beginning of time, because we read in there about the, the sun being uh, in the cool of the day when Adam and Eve got busted. That was the beginning of time and the first dispensation. So these are ages in the realm of time. This age, second, they are uh, the antediluvian age and the post diluvian age in the, in the realm of time. All right, but now what we have here, this is the fourth dispensation, the dispensation of the law, okay? Now, Yahshua the Messiah, when he comes along, he's going to come along 4,000 years after the man Adam, all right? And he's going to live, he's going to be born, live, die, and resurrect, and ascend it under the dispensation of the law. That's why we have here, 2377, for the post-Diluvian age. That includes the 33 years of Yahshua's life. Because Christianity believed that this present age started with his birth. Whereas we say this present age started on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. After Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, ascension. After he fulfilled the law and the prophets. The law of carnal ordinances. All right? And so now here, on the, on the day of Pentecost, this is the beginning of the fifth age. Um, how do I want to do this? Uh, let's start with Acts 1 and 2. Here we got Yahshua's death, his burial, his resurrection. And she's going to read something right quick. Acts 1 and 2. And to the day in which he was taken up, after that, he through the Holy Spirit was given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, mm -hmm. being seen of them forty days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh. Uh -huh. 40 days, speaking, but pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh. Okay, that's this right here. Mm -hmm. We're pointing at, all right? Uh, jump down maybe to five, say, five or six. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, Rabbi, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which a father had put in my own power. But ye shall receive power from the Holy Spirit is come, when it's come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, and unto Judea, and to Samaria, mm -hmm. and unto to the upper, uppermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, they had beheld, they were, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And when they would look steadfastly towards heaven, as 
as he went up, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Yahshua which was taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner after ye have seen him go into the heavens. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Owl, in which in is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. Mm -hmm. oh, good enough. Now, we've told you this before that this plate here, this is a fulfillment of Moses' third trip into the mount in which Moses had to hew out his own table of stones because the first table he had broke for them to be written on. And then he was going to come back down with the second table of stones, all right, which is indicative of the second covenant. This is Yahshua now. He's coming back down in fulfillment of Moses to, the, to these folks here on the day of Pentecost with the new covenant or the new testament. See, now this is the, be what is that? Acts 2 and 1, yeah, second chapter. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, while they were all in one accord, in one place, suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them both tongues like a spire, and were rest upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak, speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, now this is the day of Pentecost. This is the beginning of the fifth dispensation. That of... Come over here. Fifth dispensation. That, and, and see, and look. The fifth dispensation closed out the post-Diluvian age and opened this present, ki present kingdom age. See, where you have the spiritual assembly of Yahshua, Holy Spirit through faith, spiritual kingdom on earth, New Testament, New Covenant, the fifth dispensation, Pentecost. See, the law of the Spirit. See, that's the difference between what we're saying and what Christianity is saying. Christianity says that the, this present kingdom age began at Yahshua's birth, which we say no, because Yahshua's mission, right. Yahshua's mission was to fulfill the Old Testament or these carnal ordinances. That was his mission. So that puts him in the post diluvian age. His, his birth, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, all happened under the dispensation of the law. Right. Okay? Now here on the day of Pentecost, this is now the dispensation of the Spirit. The dispensation of grace. Right. Through faith. Why? Because it's as the result of a promise to one Abraham. See, that's why we showed you this down here. Dispensation of faith, grace through faith. Seven years later to the Gentiles. Grace through faith. Okay? Now, come down here to the sixth dispensation. Right. And that seems to be a, the most controversial one. Uh... I think I have my text, my old first edition of the textbook. I think I have it. Uh huh. I I hope it's in. I think it's in. Ah. I just passed it. Dr. Kinley, when he first made this chart, it wasn't like the way it is now. Because there were uh, things that were different on here. Um, I hope it's in here. And then I can show it to you. Yeah, you showed it to us once before. Uh, the second volume where he has it? Huh. I don't see it. I was looking at the first 
God, Dark Dark Pattern. Yeah, but what what book was it in the first, second? I think it was the second. God, Dark Dark Pattern. In that one, there were four to... books. Which book was it in? I know in the old, in the, when Joe Williams was around, I used to use his book. Yeah. He, had, he had one of the original editions that had that in there. Anyway, uh, I, I hate that air. <laughs> this is what happened. The six here used to be over here. Right, right. The seven used to be over here. Now, in 1975, Dr. Kinley moved it over. He moved the six over to where it is now, and he moved the seven over to where it is now. And it's ever since he did that, there's always been speculation on why he did it, what it, what it means, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. And I used to get into some <laughs> great arguments with certain folks about this. Because they would say, some people would say this. Well, he moved the six over, but he forgot to move these words over. Because, he, see, when the six was over here, see, that meant the new earth state, immortality, and the seven. And so he said, well, he moved the six over, but he forgot to move this over. And so it prompted some people to say, well, we have immortality as of now. That's to say, a physical immortality. We, we already have an immortal spirit right. living in us, right. but now we have an immortal body, or we're in a new earth state. That's what some people have tried to say, because the six being over there. Well, we're in a new earth state now, and I would simply beg to differ on that. You're not, because that's not the reason why Dr. Kennedy moved the six over. All right, and I'll try to show you the reason why, according to scripture and doctrine that Dr. Kennedy wrote, okay, why he did this. Now, first of all, you have to remember that this was in 1975, okay, 1975, and it was 15 years after 1960. Oh. You stop and think about it. Now, we mentioned it, but we didn't really get into any great details. I really probably don't, probably shouldn't today, because I really want to get to the other ages while we got time. But I want to at least explain this, because that's always been a big controversy about the sixth dispensation, what it is, and so forth and so on, okay? Now, let's try to, let's try to understand something. Yahshua the Messiah, on the day of Pentecost, um, poured out the Holy Spirit, all right? And, and the Jews preached to none but the Jews only for seven years mm -hmm. until the Gentiles came in in A.D. 40, okay? Now, how can I do this? I want you to get, go back to Acts. Go back to Acts, the first chapter. Maybe I can make this point. Start with 15. Acts 1 and 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of the names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must must need be, be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judah, which was guided to them that took Joshua. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of his ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder, in the midst of all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto us all the dwellers at Jerusalem, inasmuch as a pill is called in their in their own tongues Akadama, that is to say the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, let no man dwell therein, and his office let another take. Wherefore of these men which have you companion? with us all the time that the Savior of Yahshua went in out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us. 
must one uh, be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they pointed to Joseph called Barnaba, who was surnamed the Just and Messiah. And they prayed and said, Thou Yahweh, which know of the hearts of all men, show which of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of the ministry of the apostleship from which Judah by transgression fell, that he might go his own to his own place. And they gave forth their lot and fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Okay, good enough. Now, I, I had that read for this reason. Up to this point, now the Holy Spirit had not yet been poured out yet right. on Pentecost. Mm -hmm. However, Peter and the boys, they was with Joshua the Messiah for three and a half years. And they asked him, Joshua, why are you doing this? Why are we going over here? Why are we doing that? Why are you doing the other thing? And you know what Joshua would tell them? I'm fulfilling. I'm fulfilling. He, that's what he told them for three and a half years. I am fulfilling. So at this point, even though Peter don't have the Holy Spirit, after three and a half years, it's been drummed into his head, hey, Joshua, this, this scripture must needs to be fulfilled. All right? So they pick, because they know that there was 12 of them. And Joshua, I'm sure, had told them. And said, well, I'm sure Peter probably asked, Joshua, why did you pick 12 of us? And Joshua told him, I said, because Jacob had 12 sons back here. There were 12 tribes of Israel. So Peter understood at least this much. He said, well, it's got to be 12 of us. <laughs> you know, Judas, he, you know, he's God, whom by transgression fell. So we got to have a replacement. We got to have 12 of us. Here's the thing Peter did not understand. Who chose him? Right. <laughs> See, who chose him? Did they choose each other? No. It was Joshua who chose him and the others. Likewise, it would have to be Joshua to choose the replacement. Mm -hmm. That replacement they chose was Paul. Saul. And this is scripture. Oh, gosh, what's that? It says what it talks about him being born out of due time, so to speak. He said, I'm not a whip. And in another place, he says, I'm not a whip. I'm the chiefest apostle. See, he was made to be an apostle. Mm -hmm. Okay? He was made to be an apostle. He was made to, yeah, Dr. Kennedy said he was the greatest of them all. Did more voyages, went through more stuff, wrote more books. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was made to be an apostle. It was the Holy Spirit. And see, look, the reason why the others were apostles because they were with Yahshua Messiah. They walked with him. All right, they knew they knew of his ministry. It was with him for three and a half years. The only thing Paul knew was Paul was very skilled in the law and the prophets. He he was very skilled in that. Even though he was a eunuch, he was not allowed in the assembly. However, because his father was sort of well to do, he was able to pay for tutoring lessons under Gamaliel, you know, the high priest. See, so he was very astute. Mm -hmm. in the law and the prophets and Joshua came along and just quickened that understanding because all he did was show Paul that he was the fulfillment of that which he had studied which is really which is the autobiography of Joshua that's all the Old Testament is the Old Testament is the autobiography of Joshua Messiah before he comes here on this cross right. because it tells you who he is before he shows up that's how they would know who he is mm -hmm. or who he was See? So Paul was made to be an apostle. And look, the only way a person could receive the Holy Spirit in the fifth dispensation, right. they, had to, they had to hear it from an apostle. Right. See? Now we can go to the textbook. Let's go to the textbook, volume two. I can't think of the page right quick, but when I get it, I'll let you know. Because okay. Dr. Kinley wrote about it. And and for, and and for you to understand the sixth dispensation, then you're going to have to understand what Dr. Kenley wrote. Uh, I have two. Did you get that word? Born out of due season. Volume two, page nineteen. And this is called the absolute necessity of universal apostolic confirmation. Not deacons. All right. Go ahead and read. Here under this caption, 
we will discuss the absolute necessity of the universal apostolic confirmation. It was absolutely necessary that the apostles, not deacons, or apostolic disciples chosen by Yahshua, the Messiah, were to be his eyewitnesses to all that began both to do, teach before and after his resurrection. Therefore, Yahshua Messiah said to the apostles before he ascended, John truly baptized with water, but ye should not depart from Jerusalem before ye have baptized with, before ye are baptized with the Holy Spirit. After which they were to bear witness unto him both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uppermost part of the earth. After the apostles had been baptized with the Holy Spirit and during the time of the great persecution in AD 34, the apostles remained in Jerusalem and continued to preach the gospel of the Messiah while Philip, one of the dispersed deacons, went out to the city of Samaria, Samaria and preached Yahshua unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he had did. For the unkind, unclean spirit, crying with a loud voice, came out that many were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, and they were lame and were healed. And there was a great joy in that city. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of Yahweh, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed with them, and they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as much as yet was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Then laid they their hands upon them and received the Holy Spirit. Remembering that Yahshua Messiah had previously told the apostles, not the deacons, that they were to be his witnesses, both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uppermost part of the earth. Yahshua Messiah positively meant what he had said to, to the chosen apostles. Therefore, there is no difference how many people were baptized, healed, or how were much rejoicing there was in the city of Samaria. Because Philip preaching, no one in the city or elsewhere at that time could receive the Holy Spirit before the apostles. Peter John, who being his witnesses, went down to Samaria, confirmed that Peter, the deacon, had said when he was preaching Yahshua unto them. Okay, now, okay, now, this is what Dr. Kenley wrote. He said, because they had to be apostles. The only way you could receive the Holy Spirit was through an apostle. Right. Okay, and that was indicative of the fifth dispensation. And that fifth dispensation lasted all the way down to 1975. Because see, Dr. Kennedy received a vision in 1931. Mm -hmm. And I've heard some people try to say, well, that was the sixth dispensation. No, it's not. That's in the fifth dispensation. Mm -hmm. And here's the reason why I say this. Dr. Kennedy started the convention system in 1967. And he was at every convention that he spoke at every convention, mm -hmm. except one, the last one that he attended. With the exception of, well, he did speak in the, the business meeting, but, I'm far as, but as far as addressing the assembly, okay? okay? And he used to tell this to people, and I, and I got it by eyewitness account. He would tell people, come to the convention. He would tell people, 1967, come mm -hmm. to the convention. 1969, come to the convention. 1971, come to the conventions. 1973, come to the convention. 1975, come to the convention. Why? Because he said this. Because, because you could be sealed. Right, right. What do you mean? Because he was going to speak there. He was the apostle. He was, he like Paul, was made to be an apostle because of this vision. Right. Because he received this panoramic vision. He was made to be, he wasn't walking around with Joshua the Messiah in the flesh, mm -hmm. but he was made to be an eyewitness because of this vision. Right. And that made him an apostle. And that made him with the ability to convey the Holy Spirit right. to someone. Right. See? 
And that's what that's why he would tell people, come to the convention. And he spoke at all the conventions that he that he attended except the one in 75. Now, and I know about that one because I attended that one. So I'm an eyewitness to that. He did not speak to the assembly in that one. But this is what he did. He changed, that's when he changed the six and the seven over. I told you. The six was over here, the seven was over here. So he took the six, put it here, and he took the seven from here and put it here. He changed it over. A couple of other things he did too. The, we used to say out of court. This is an old chart. It says out of court. He changed that to court round oh. out. And uh, what else did he do? And this up here. This didn't used to be up here. Yahweh Elohim Yahshua over this Elohistic body. That wasn't like that. He said put it up there. Okay. There might have been a couple of others that I can't think of at the moment. But those I remember right, you know, right now. All right. The six is always the one that really got me because what? Because I knew, I mean, okay, you're changing the dispensation. That means you're making a dispensational change. And my question is always, okay, what's being dispensed? What's the change? And I never understood that for years until Yahweh showed me. And he, and he showed me by making me go back into the textbook. We just read it out the textbook of about apostolic confirmation. Mm -hmm. See, Dr. Kinley, when he was alive, and he, and he had deans, his lieutenant, and they did miracles, but they did it through the Holy Spirit that was in that body. You understand what I'm saying? He had that power. Just like when Yahshua was here. See, up here after the Mount of Transfiguration, Yahshua sent 70 out. Right. Right? Now, the Holy Spirit had not yet been given, but but it was by the Holy Spirit or through Yahshua that those 70 chosen, they went out and they did miracles. They did healings and Casting out demons and stuff like that. They came back and bragged about it. But how did they do it? Did they, were they endowed with the Holy Spirit? No, they were not. It was the Holy Spirit in Yahshua that was performing through them yeah. the miracles that the people saw. Mm -hmm. Likewise with these deeds when Dr. Kinley was alive. If they deeds did any miracles, it was because that Holy Spirit that Dr. Kinley was performing through mm -hmm. them. Because he was that representative. He was that eyewitness walking around in the flesh. But now, in 1975, he knew he was going to take off the flesh not long from there. Mm -hmm. So he's got to do something. What he got to do? Hey, I got to make them all apostles. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to move the six over here. And I'm going to make you all apostles now. That's the double portion in this age. Because why? Go look at the principle, the six. Six day back here. When the manna was given back here in the wilderness, they, they had to get a double portion on the sixth day. Right. Why? Because on the seventh day, none would be given. It's the same thing here. You got to get your double portion now. Why? Because in the next dispensation, there will be none given. Wow. And those that do not have, have, have stored up, then you'll be lost. That's the whole point. It's all principles that repeat themselves. So here, the sixth dispensation here, see this is the double, the double portion is now you receiving the Holy Spirit and that through your testimony, see, the Holy Spirit can be given. In other words, now you are made an eyewitness right. to this gospel. You're made an eyewitness. We weren't back there with Joshua in the mm -hmm. flesh, but now because of this vision, this great panoramic vision, in this dispensation, now we are made to be eyewitnesses of this doctrine. And because of that, we we receive the Holy Spirit, and through the Holy Spirit, through our testimony, we are able to give it. Just like what Kimberly did. Just like what the apostles did. Apostolic confirmation. At the end of this age. And it's in the end of this age, the universe we got hit, the universal revelation that will happen in the sixth age. Sixth dispensation, rather. Why? Because six Look at the pattern. We told you about the steps. There's seven steps here, right? We told you. The first step is the gate. Second step, altar of sin sacrifice. Third step, grace and labor. Fourth step, the door. With the cup of holy anointing on at the door. Fifth step, this holy place. See, with the golden lampstand. Golden table of shoe bread. Golden altar of incense. Sixth step, the second departmental veil of blue, purple, and scarlet with the angels embroidered on it that separates the holy place from the most holy place. 
And the seventh step is this Ark of the Covenant with the two archangels on top of a mercy seat, where the clouds sat, representing a, the seat of authority, with the tables of stone therein. See, representing the law of the spirit. Okay? These are principles. See, that's why we're doing this the way we've been doing these lessons. You know, if you notice, we're just laying out firm foundations so that when we really start to get into something substantial, so to speak, you will have a firm foundation to stand on so that you will understand a lot of the things that will come. Because if you don't have this foundation, then it's just going to sound like gobbledygook to you because you have no foundation in what's up here. And that's what we're trying to do, you know, in these lessons, trying to show you something in a foundational form so you have something to stand on, okay? Now, here, as we said here, this is the, the revelation, it says revelation of Yahshua Messiah. Let me put an adjective on that. Universal mm -hmm. revelation. And when we say universal, that means everybody's going to see. Because mm -hmm. see, the universe is in two distinct parts. There's a physical creation. And there's an angelic creation. So when we say universal, that means all the angels will see, all the demons will see, and all the souls will see. <laughs> they will see this, all right, at the end of this age. See, and that's, and that's the end. And see, this dispensation will bring about the end of the present kingdom age. And see, it will bring this to an end, and it will bring in ushers into the fifth age or kingdom age, which is the new earth state. And see, and, and that will bring us to the seventh dispensation of the kingdom being being uh, enmeshed in immortality. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's get plates 38, 38, 39, 40. And we'll put them up here. And plate 14. And see, we'll see if we can try to get through through the rest of these ages. Now, if you notice, we're here in the fourth age, which is the middle age out of seven ages. <laughs> All right? There's seven ages, seven dispensations, because that's how Yahweh operates in perfection. You can look at it like uh, these seven ages, like the seven branch lampstand. The seven branch lampstand, see, it has seven prongs. And, 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 Oil was poured into the fourth branch, or middle prong, and then it went out to the other three on one side, and then three on the other side. So we're in the midst of it right now. Okay? The, the spirit being poured out in the midst of the fourth age. Okay? Uh, 38, right? Yeah, 38, 39, 40. 38 is right there. It's showing. It's on, it's on, your, on your left side. Right here. Right there. It's laying down. It's 14. It's right, I can see it. Yes, it's right here. Yeah. This one. That one right there. See, it says 38 right there at the bottom. Uh -huh. Yeah, because they're all going to be on the bottom. On the bottom, on the, on the lower half. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's right there. I see it right there. What else you have, 39? Yeah, 139. 38, 39, 40. Joshua coming out of, out of uh, what's the other one? The one right there, 14. Okay. It's right there, right, right on top. All right, let's, let's, uh, first Thessalonians 13, and let's fly, because I, because I have, don't think I've got about 15 minutes left. First Thessalonians, is it one? No, I think it's four. Four thirteen. 
413. But I would not have you be to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. If ye if for if we believe that Yahshua died and rose again, even so shall also which sleep in Yahshua will he bring with him. Mm -hmm. For this we say unto you by the word of Yahweh, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of our Savior shall not prevent them which are asleep. For Yahshua himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Okay, now he's going to descend. Look here. Heaven. He's going to descend. Now, if he's got to descend, he's going by the pattern. He's got to pass through a veil. Mm -hmm. What veil is that? Mm -hmm. The veil of the human race. Right. See? Keep reading. For Yahshua himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of Yahweh. And the dead in the Messiah shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahshua in the air. Now in the clouds, see if you remember when we read in Acts, you say he was taken up in a cloud. But you have to remember, see that was a vision. See, and the cloud that he's talking about is the cloud of your, your brain is made, of, is made of gray and white matter. That's it's a type of a cloud. So now he's going to appear in cloud. Now the reason why I got this up here is to show you how he's going to appear. See, here on angelic transgression, see, we have the angels here behind a veil of angelic invisibility. They're not abstract. It just simply means you cannot see them. Mm -hmm. But once they come from behind the veil of angelic invisibility, they come through the veil, now they're in here. Now that they're in a state of incorporeal or angelic visibility. In other words, that means they can be seen in a vision. See, just like Satan appeared to Eve in a vision, or he appeared to her in a state of angelic visibility. Draw a line. Here's Yahshua. Revealed from heaven. And he's revealed to the world. So he's going to reveal himself to the world in a state of angelic visibility. Yeah. See, in a vision to the world. See? Okay? Keep going. Then we shall all our life and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet Yahshua in the air. Uh -huh, so and meet, so, yeah, meet in the air. See, and people have problems with that because they say, see, because the, the people that believe in the rapture will go to the scripture and say, see, it says so right there, mm -hmm. meet you in the air. But see, they don't understand Paul's writings. See, see, it's, it's hard to understand unless you have a pattern, you know, or initiated in the principles that, that Yahweh has laid out. See, because we tell, we told you that heaven, see, you got a first heaven, Second heaven and the third heaven. See, which is space, atmosphere, eternity. Alright? So now the soul see he's gonna appear to people in, in the air or he's gonna appear to them in the soul. Mm. See, because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. See, that is to say the prince of the power over souls that are not in the Ashra Messiah. Mm. Okay, keep reading. And so shall we ever be with him. What oh. oh. I think that's about it on that. Okay. Uh, First Corinthians 15, maybe about 53, I'm thinking. Fifteen and fifty-three, you said about. Oh, fifty-one. Behold, I show you a mystery. Mm -hmm. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, at the last trump, or for the trumpeter shall sound, and the dead shall be risen, incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. Mm -hmm. So when this corruptible shall be put on the incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, O death is swallowed up in victory. O death, 
where is thy sting? Mm -hmm. O grave, where is thy victory? See, now, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Dead and buried. See, that? Yahshua was dead and buried. See? But he, but, but he, dead victory over that. I'm going to show you. Keep reading. The sting of death is sin. Here's the sting of death. It's sin. That started again with Adam. Mm -hmm. The sting of death is sin. Read. And the strength of the sin is the law. Now, the strength of sin was the law of cardinal ordinances. When this law was given, it didn't eradicate sin. It made sin more exceedingly <laughs> sinful and made the person who did the sin exceedingly more condemned. Mm -hmm. yeah. Breathe. But thanks be to Yahweh, which gives us the victory through, save, through our Savior, Yahshua Messiah. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh, for as much as ye know that your labor, labor is not in vain uh, in him. All right, now, eschatology. Here, yeah, that's, that's, that's at the end of the sixth dispensation, revelation of Yah. That's going to close this age out and bring in the fifth age, the age of the new earth state. See, close this age out, and look, the lake of fire. The lake of fire is nothing but Yahweh. Because mm -hmm. that's what he is, is a consuming fire. See, people think it's a special, no, it's just going back into Yahweh where it came out of. That's all. That's all that simply means. And we got the renovation of the earth. And renovation, see, meaning what? Meaning that it's going to be fit. See, renovated into a, in, in, like new, like brand new. You know, and I know, I mean, I used to work in an iron works. And we used to do that. We used to take old rusty stuff, throw it back in the hopper and melt it down and recast it. You wouldn't have never known it was rusty or nothing. It looks good as new. Mm -hmm. See, because all the impurities and stuff was burnt mm -hmm. out of it and, and all of that. And we just recast it. And see, that's what's happening here, the renovation of the earth. And here, it's the same way with us. Our bodies have to be renovated, see, in the new earth state, see, to contain this new reality or this new uh, this immortality that's in us now. Our earth state cannot contain the immortal spirit that is dwelling in us. So, therefore, this container has to change. New earth state. This is the fifth age right here. Now, the sixth age we got here says six and seven ages to come. Now the sixth age here, see that's here on the veil, the sixth step. Go back in 1 Corinthians 15, maybe start with 27. How does that go? 27. For he hath put all things under his feet. Try, try above that. Okay. Yeah, sorry. 22. Yeah, For as in Adam all died, mm -hmm. even so in the Messiah shall all be made alive. For every man his own for every man in his own order, the Messiah the first fruits, after they that are the Messiahs at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Yahweh. The kingdom. See all of this is going is going up making up the kingdom, which is his body. Because that's how it started off. Go ahead. Delivered up to the kingdom of Yahweh, even the Father. When he shall put, have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemy under his feet. Mm -hmm. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is excluded, mm -hmm. which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, mm -hmm. then shall the Son also himself be subjected unto him, that put all things under him, that, he, that Yahweh may be all in all. Okay, so now all things have to be made subject unto him. Hell who? Elohim. See, that's like the high priest in the Day of Atonement, putting on the breastplate and the ephod and all, and, see, and, and taking the Israelites up with him when he presents himself before Elohim. This is the seventh age here. This is the fifth age, the new earth state. This is the fifth age. The sixth age is the veil, is the dividing veil. That's Elohim putting all things under his feet and him taking off shape and form to go in behind the veil. See, we started off with Elohim coming up from behind the veil of inscrutability, incomprehensibility. Now he's got to go back into that. See, quickly, get Ezekiel 46 and 1. And we're almost finished. Up. See, because he, see, Elohim, see, he's got to go back. If Elohim 
to God's shape and form, then there has to be a point where Elohim takes off right. shape and form. It's here, see? And he's going up in here into the most holy place to present himself before Yahweh. For Ezekiel 46 and 1. It'll be a while. I know. I know. <laughs> 46 and 1, Ezekiel. Thus saith Yahweh, the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut in, shall be shut the sixth working day. Okay, now let's hold it. It says this gate is going to be shut for six working days. What do you mean? Six working ages. Uh -huh. Why? Because remember, Elohim's Worked on six days according to Moses' vision. On the seventh day, he rested. So this gate is going to be closed for six working ages or six working days. Read. But on the Sabbath, it shall be open. But on the Sabbath or the seventh age, it will be open. Go ahead. And in that, in the day of the new moon, it shall be opened. And then the day of the new moon. The new moon is no moon. No law, no the law of carnal ordinances. See, you know, none of that. See, no moon here because it's, it, there's no moon here. Because the light thereof is the sun himself. S-O-N. Read. And the prince shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate without, and shall stand by the post of the gate. And the priest shall prepare his burnt offerings and his peace offerings, and he shall worship, be worshipped, and uh, worship at the threshold of the gate. Oh, good enough. All right, now, it's just like the high priest on the Day of Atonement. He had to go in behind the veil, flip the blood, do that figure eight, and then come out, and then this is him coming out from the seventh age. This is the beginning of the first set of new ages. Um, uh, this is Elohim, see, Coming out, this is him coming out from behind the veil after making that figure eight. Him coming out here. Seven ages have been completed. He has seven stars in his hand, showing seven new ages. See, the end being declared from the beginning. The beginning was Elohim was new, meaning that the, the purpose was hidden in a mystery. Here he's. that we'll be able to look back and see what had been done and understand why Elohim even made a creation in the first place or even why he even made a man, why he did any of this. Here it will be crystal clear, totally clear, totally revealed that the big difference is we'll be there. We will be in him. See, and these are ages. And then this is the seven. And see, that's here ending. Because when you say ending, that's him here. See, he's at the beginning and he's at the end of these seven ages. And look, this is not the only set of seven ages that existed. There were ages that were before. Right. And we just showed you there will be ages to come. Ages, sets of ages that will come after this one. Okay? The difference is here will be in him to determine what will be mm -hmm. the next, you know, set of ages, set of ages how it will go. Even the devil will be reconstituted because he did such a good work in this set of ages. Yahweh will bring him back and say, boy, I got some more work for you next week. <laughs> now, he's not resurrecting him or nothing like that. Don't, mis don't mm -mm. misunderstand that. See, see, Yahweh, you know, Yahweh is, he can do whatever he wants. He's just, he's just reconstituted. Yeah, he, he destroyed it utterly here. Lake of fire. Here, Satan is utterly destroyed. And you won't see him no more for the rest of these ages here. But once the set of ages is complete and a new set of ages come in, see, then Yahweh, Yahweh, he'll, 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 he'll bring that adversary back. They say, hey, man, I need you to do some more work for me. You did, did such good work last week? Just do the same thing. You know? Because I'm Yahweh, you know? And he rep the devil represents principles too, believe it or not. See, he represents those negative principles that we have to see. It's just like you see the positive wire and the negative wire, and you have light or understanding. This is how Yahweh operates. You have to see both principles. Okay. Uh, we're about out of time. Hopefully, I, I hope I did some justice 
or at least doing an overview as far as what these ages and dispensations mean and what they represent, okay? I mean, you, there's a lot of ways you can go through it. I just wanted to do a basic overview. I know I've done other lectures like the, uh, the hydrogen atom. You can apply that on there. You can, you can correlate things on the ages and dispensations. You can correlate the six days of, cre the days of creation on here. You can take the tabernacle pattern. Look, you got the, the ante, the post, the present. See, that's, you know, court round about, holy place, most holy place, seven ages, seven dispensations, seven, seven steps. steps. It's all correlated. Right. It's all correlatable. So there's a lot of things you can do with these charts once you begin to understand the principles that are laid in them. And that's all that we're trying to do. We're just trying to simply lay down some foundational principles so that when we do get into some stuff and start to fly, then you begin to understand, hopefully, oh, now I understand why you went through this or why you did that. Mm -hmm. Why you did Okay? Right. All right? Uh, unless there's any questions or any comments or anything? Oh, anybody? Okay. We're all right so far? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that's all I have to say today. Uh, I, I hope it was edifying and that um, we thank Yahweh for his mercy and his blessings, okay? Constantly. And the thing of it is, it's just uh, the scripture, I'll leave with this scripture. The scripture of Jesus in Isaiah says, it says, wisdom and, tell it, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of thy salvation. See, and you can only get that in one. Okay? So therefore, be safe, be healthy, but most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah because he truly is the only hope of glory. Okay? And with those few words, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I thoroughly enjoyed that, you know, and I hope you too out there remember take the notes, you know, research these things. This is a school of research. Right. Whatever, don't believe it. The Father would say this, because he had this divine revelation. Don't believe me because I told you, or I said this. Make me prove it to you. We got beyond a shadow of a doubt that I did have a vision and a revelation straight from Yahweh. Okay. And it still blows my mind today going over these charts how much you can learn off of them. There's nothing mystical about them. There's no magic behind them. It's a revelation. Right. Oh, you got the book, you got the Bible. Research it. Dictionaries. You know, it's nothing it hard. And have the strength to accept attested, proven facts. Okay? That's all we ask. Okay, now, uh, we can end now and with the doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless in his presence with exceeding joy. So the Lord of tell him our Savior, to Yahshua the Messiah sovereign, to the glory, majesty, the meaning and the power, both of all time, now and ever, let us all say Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I gotta work on that. I'm gonna go on and Mike. Are we have to layer now?